Christmas is a time where we acknowledge the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, does it mean that it was actually on the December 25th that Jesus Christ was born? Not sure, probably not. But it was a day that mankind decided to consecrate. It was a day that we decided to put apart to acknowledge the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because when the Lord Jesus Christ came upon this earth, it was a sign that God is ready to redeem mankind to himself. And it was a great time of celebration. It is a great time of rejoicing. We can see about our society how everything is being emphasized on buying gifts, spending time with families, and various different things. But we're forgetting the essence of this time. We're forgetting the true meaning of this time. It is important that even as parents who are watching me right now, that you educate your children by telling them that this is a time to give glory to God. This is a time to acknowledge the Son of God, to acknowledge the gift of God, and to worship Him. Just like those three wise men came in with gifts, with incense, with frankincense and myrrh because they came with gold. You see, these were expensive things because they wanted to honor God. So it's important that we take this time to really honor God and to give him thanks for bringing us this far to the end of the year. And I want you to take a moment and think about this season about the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ, about how much it is important for you to set time apart to seek His face, to set time apart to spend time with Him, to set time apart to thank God for Him. And the Bible also says that no flesh can glory before God. So it is important that we take this time to acknowledge the gift because the Bible says that salvation is a gift from God. Hello everyone, my name is Apostle Bertol and welcome to my channel. If this is your first time joining, welcome. And don't forget to like, subscribe and put your notification on. If you are returning, thank you for your support and thank you for watching. I wanted to say Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to everybody for we are about to get into a teaching uh, where we're going to see a closer look at Jesus' birth, the atonement of the world. As you can already see, we are about that time of the year where Christmas is upon us. And this is a time of celebration. This is a time of rejoicing. But there are critical things that God wanted me to speak on because he wants us to have the right perspective of it. He wants us to have the right mindset about it. So please, before we get into the teaching, I want you to please get your materials ready, whether it's your phones, your notepads, your notepen, if you're hands-on, Anything that you need, please get them now before we start and get into the teaching. Thank you. So if you pay attention to the scriptures, from the book of Genesis, we can see that there are various characters that are being mentioned. And one of them, for example, like Noah, um, different ones that would be mentioned like Enoch. And you can see that it was unto Abraham, the Godhead, actually initiated the project Redemption, which is when they started to be initiating the steps and the requirement necessary to be able to redeem mankind back to God. And, to, and, and I have proof for this because you can see from the scriptures that it says that Jesus is the son of Abraham. You can also see, we'll see in the scriptures that Jesus is also the son of David. And today's reading, we're going to be focusing in the book of Matthew. Um, most people will say it's kind of like a boring reading because I know that I myself too, I'm guilty of this in the past. When I used to get to that place in the scriptures where it talks about uh, the genealogy and when people are being um, showing how they came, we usually skip those parts because it's like, eh, it's not really important, it's not really useful. But God actually rebuked me on this and he told me that there are some important things that we're missing when we're skipping this thing. So I actually advise you to not do that again because it is very important to know where someone is coming from. It is very important to be able to trace 
the family, the tribe, the nation that the person is coming from. And the, that is why it keeps the authenticity of the scriptures. Because Jesus Christ did not just appear from heaven and then said, oh, I'm the Messiah. Jesus Christ actually had a history. There was a history. We can trace him down from the beginning of the world to when he came and then until when he died, he was buried and he resurrected and now he is seated on the right hand of God. So we're going to start with Matthew chapter 1 and we're going to read the book of Matthew chapter 1 and I'm going to start here in verse 1 and it says the book of the generation of Jesus Christ the son of David the son of Abraham. So again we can see here that Jesus Christ is referred to as the son of David and Jesus is also the son of Abraham. Verse 2 says Abraham begat Isaac and Isaac begat Jacob. And Jacob begat Judas and his brethren. And Judas begat Phares and Zara of Tamar. And Phares begat Esron, and Esron begat Aram. And Aram begat Aminadab. Aminadab begat Nason. And Nason begat Salmon. And Salmon begat Booz of Rachel. And Booz begat Obed of Ruth. And Obed begat Jesse, and Jesse begat David the king. And David the king begat Solomon of her that had been the wife of Uriah. And Solomon begat Roboam, Roboam begat Abia, and Abia begat Asa, and Asa begat Josaphat, and Josaphat begat Joram, and Joram begat Ozias, Ozias begat Joatham, and Joatham begat Achaz, and Achaz begat Ezekias, Ezekias begat Manasses, and Manasses begat Amon, and Amon begat Josias, and Josias begat Jechonias and his brethren. About the time they were carried away to Babylon. And after they were brought to Babylon, the Jochanias begat Salatiel, and Salatiel begat Zerubbabel, and Zerubbabel begat Abiud, and Abiud begat Eliakim, and Eliakim begat Azor, and Azor begat Sadok, and Sadok begat Akim. And Akim begat Eliud, and Eliud begat Eliezer, and Eliezer begat Matan, and Matan begat Jacob, and Jacob begat Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom was born Jesus, who is called Christ. So all the generations from Abraham to David are 14 generations. And from David unto the carrying away into Babylon are 14 generations. And from the carrying away into Babylon into Christ are 14 generations. Actually, I want to tell you that I actually checked this out. I counted from the generation of Abraham to David. And as you saw me reading, if you count every single generation, it will actually add up to 14. And if you count from David down to when they were captured to Babylon, it will be 14. And if you count from there to the end, you will see it's another 14 generation. And I thought that was very interesting because if you add this up, it's about 42 generations until the Lord Jesus Christ came to earth. And you might say, because this, this really scared me, because if you think about it, when Adam and Eve sinned, you would think that, okay, God Almighty in his sovereignty should just be able to just make Jesus Christ come into like maybe the next 10 generation at most. You know, why did God take this long? Why did it take this long until Jesus Christ came? 42 generations. That is a long time. And the reason is because God needed specific requirements. There were specific times in the divine appointment of God that God could not release Jesus until that appointed time came in. And a good example of this is if you look in the book of Genesis, when God cut a covenant with Abraham, he told Abraham that your people will be slaves for 400 years. So even if 
you wanted the people of Israel to get out of bondage in the 349 year or the 399 year, God would still not allow them because the cup of the Amorites was not full yet. So it had to be 400 years before you can start interceding so that the people can be removed from the captivity. And when you even pay attention that in the book of Exodus, you will see that it took about 430 years because the Israelites were very stubborn, different things happened, but the minimum required time was 400 years. So now I believe that this timing about 42 generation was already captured in the divine knowledge of God, in the divine wisdom of God. And he knew in the appointed time that he wanted Jesus to be here on earth. So it means that if you wanted Jesus to come in the time of David, Jesus would not have come in the time of David. If you wanted Jesus to come in the time of Abraham, he wouldn't have come in the time of Abraham because it wasn't the time yet. And when all those requirements were fulfilled, now God released him in the appointed time. So God really wanted me to stress a little bit on that because it is very important to see how much it doesn't matter how much fast you want God to be. It's about the timing that is reserved to the Father in his divine appointment to release things. And as we continue here, we see in verse 18, it says, Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on, the, on this wise, when as his mother Mary was espoused, to Joseph before they came together she was found with child of the Holy Ghost now I want you to really understand how scary this scripture is because if you really think on the time when they were living on earth the time when Mary was on earth and Joseph this is quite a difficult testimony for Mary because it says that the time that she was to get married to Joseph she was found with the child of the Holy Ghost. Now, imagine Mary and you come to her and she says, and you see that Mary has been a woman who has been faithful. She's been following God. And then suddenly she's pregnant. And then she's pregnant when she was not married yet because she was about to get married. So you can imagine how people view her. They probably look down on her. And then if, and if they ask Mary, for example, like who is the father? She's going to say the Holy Ghost. So, like, think about that if, as a woman. And you come in and you say, who is the father of the child? You will say the Holy Spirit. So you can already see that that will already create a lot of chaos because they will say, how can the Holy Spirit impregnate you? That's no way. That's a lie. And you can already see the reproach. So I really think that that's a very important thing to keep in mind because Mary had to keep this thing secret. She had to keep this thing secret. And in fact, you will even see that as we keep on reading, Joseph was actually a just man. He was actually a very good man because the scripture actually shows you in verse 19 that Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. So it means that Joseph actually cared about Mary's um, integrity. He cared about not making a fool of her or making a shame of her in public because you don't understand how Mary will look in society. And Joseph, in his mind, being innocent, I mean, he wouldn't want to marry Mary who is already pregnant of a child. And I believe that Joseph would not believe, even if Mary would say, I'm pregnant of a child of the Holy Ghost. Because I myself, when I put myself in his shoes, I don't think I would believe it too. So God had to find a way to convince Joseph to stay in. And you can see here in verse 20, it says, but while he talked, on these things. You see, Joseph was meditating on these things. He was thinking about it. He was finding, trying to find a way to make these things, you know, not having with peace, no argument, so that he can preserve the image of Mary. Now, you need to check yourself because to me, I really felt convicted here because you have to understand that would you do the same thing that Joseph did? Or would you want to put Mary in that situation of just being like it's impossible for you to tell the truth on the fact that you are carrying a child from the Holy Spirit because it's very hard to believe this so it really had me to really think and process that we need to allow the Holy Spirit to to teach us we need to allow the Holy Spirit to show us things that may be outside of our perspective outside of our experience outside of our understanding so and you see here verse 20 said but why he taught on these things 
behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream. You see, dreams are very important. Don't listen to people who tell you, oh, you know, your dreams are not important. They're not even real. No, dreams are very important. You get encounters in dreams. I've had several encounters in dreams. So please take your dream seriously because Joseph had a dream. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife. For that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. So you see that God had to send the message to the angel and the, tell the angel that Mary is actually not lying. She's actually pregnant of the Holy Ghost because that's what the angel told Joseph. And now Joseph had, I can imagine how much peace he had, he's comforted from that. And you see verse 21, it says, and, he, and she shall bring forth a son and thou shalt call his name Jesus. So you see that even the name of Jesus was not chosen by Joseph and Mary. His name was not chosen by their parents. God gave that name. The name of Jesus was given by God through the messenger, his angel. So there was no creativity here on them trying to give a name to the child. And, the, and, the, and they give us the meaning of the name. And the meaning of the name Jesus is that for he shall save his people from their sins. So Jesus is actually a savior. That's what the scripture is showing us. Jesus is our savior. He is here to save us from our sins. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with a child and shall bring forth a son and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him and took unto him his wife. So Joseph actually heeded to the instruction that the angel of the Lord told him. And verse 25 is a very powerful verse too that I wanted to highlight. It says, A new her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son and he called his name Jesus. So it means that even though Joseph legally married Mary, Joseph had to wait to consummate the marriage until Jesus Christ was born. And that really shows that Joseph understood and really loved the Lord Jesus. He really loved God because that is not something that is easy because you can see this you can think about this you have to understand that um, Joseph had to give up on many things to be able to allow the plans and the purposes of God to be done through his life and this was something that the Lord wanted me to highlight as we continue here we will go into chapter 2 2 verse 1 says now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod, the king, behold, there, were, there came wise men from the east of Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. So you can already see the divinity of Jesus here because I want you to really check this verse too very very well pay attention here. he says where is he that is born king jesus christ was born king jesus christ was not first born then became a king he was born a king the king of the jews and then they said for we have seen his star so these people were able to tap into the spirit to understand astrology to be able to understand how to navigate things in the spirit and you see here that we have come to worship him you see you wouldn't come and worship someone if he wasn't important so he was a king and they came to worship him and verse 3 said when herod the king had heard these things he was troubled you see herod was troubled and all jerusalem with him and when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. So even Herod at that time, he got scared because he didn't know what to expect. Because he said, wait, 
These guys are coming here saying that where is he who is supposed to be born king of the Jews? So it means that Herod was threatened because in this time Herod was king. And Herod, in his own um, humanistic thinking, he was threatened because he doesn't know how, what Jesus is going to do. He's afraid of losing power. So he has to, he, he went and asked the people, the religious teachers, the religious scribes and the, and the Pharisees that where is this king supposed to be born? And because the Bible is very prophetic, the Bible has captured where Jesus was supposed to be born. And they said here, and they said unto him in Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet. And thou Bethlehem in the land of Judah are not the least among the princes of Judah, for out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. So he was captured in the scriptures where Jesus will be born. And verse 7 says, Then Herod, when he had privily called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared, and he sent them to Bethlehem, and said, Go and search diligently for the young child, and when ye have found him, Bring me word again that I may come and worship him also. But you might think here that Herod was actually being honest about what he said. But it's actually from verse 9 that God actually revealed to us that Herod's intentions were not true. And even if you see from the beginning, like I said, if you check in verse 3, Herod was troubled. He was troubled when these wise men came. And, 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 and in this translation, it says wise men. But if you look in different translations, it's called them magicians. Because these people are actually not the people of God. These people are people who actually understood things of the Spirit and they wanted to come and give glory to God because God was actually sending His Son to the earth. You can see verse 9 says, When they had heard the king, they departed and lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them till he came and stood over where the young child was. You see, I realized that these magicians, or these three wise men, as the scripture says, they actually didn't need help from Herod. Because at the end of the day, they still followed the star. At the end of the day, the star still brought them to where the child was. So, and you will see how this situation of these wise men being able to go to Herod and reveal the, the, the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ will actually cause a lot of chaos to other people, to a lot of innocent babies. And we see here verse 10, when they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy because they understood that the king of the Jew was born and they knew that it was time for salvation. It was the time where God was fulfilling his promise to save his people back to himself. And verse 11, it says, And when they were coming to the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh, and being warned of God in a dream. You see, even these magicians, even these three wise men, even though they were not following God, God knew their heart. And God knew why? Because they came and worshipped his son. It means they acknowledge the kingship of Jesus. And God protected them by sending them a dream and telling them that they should not return to Herod. Because if they return to Herod, Herod will make sure to find Jesus and kill him. Because remember what we read, Herod was troubled. Herod was threatened. And he was afraid in himself because of his position, because of his power. And you see here, it says that they should, that the angel told them, and being one of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed their own country another way. So they went another way instead of going back the way they came. So we can see verse 13 says, and when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. So it's very, very important that you take your dream seriously. Because the angel again appeared to Joseph, saying, Arise and take the young child and his mother and flee into Egypt, and be thou there until I bring thee a word, for Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. 
So it's very clear here, we've talked about this. Verse 14 says, when he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night and departed into Egypt. You see, this is very important here. I want to pause here because obedience. It means that the angel came at a time when Joseph was sleeping. Yes, because it was a dream. Secondly, it wasn't convenient. And Joseph could have said, man, you know, I'm kind of tired. Can we do it in the morning? You know, he could have been like, well, you know, I'm kind of tired. Can we do it tomorrow? No. Joseph heeded to the instruction immediately because he knew from the urgency of the word of the angel that he had to depart from that land immediately because if he doesn't, he's in danger, the child is in danger, and the mother is in danger. And all of this, is, it shows you how much God preserves and protects the people that are involved for the fulfillment of his purpose and his agenda. When he arose, verse 14, when he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night and departed into Egypt and was there until the death of Herod, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Out of Egypt have I called my son. Verse 16 said, Then Herod, when he saw that he was mocked of the wise men, you see, Herod was angry because he was waiting for the wise men, they never came back. But that's because God spoke to them in a dream, so they never went back. And he said, was exceedingly wroth. So he was so angry and sent forth and slew all the children that were in Bethlehem and in all the coast thereof from two years old and under, according to the time which he had diligently inquired of the wise men. You see, this is very serious. Because, look, can you imagine the amount of babies that were killed just because of Jesus Christ? Can you Im imagine the amount of blood that was shed because God had to protect Jesus Christ? And this was all because of the mistake of these three wise men or these three magicians because they went to Herod to inquire where the son or where the king of the Jews should be born. But at the end of the day, even though they received the prophecy from the Pharisees, they received the prophecy from the, the, the religious teachers because it was captured in the Bible. At the end of the day, if you look at the following of the scriptures, they still followed the star. They still followed the star until the star was hanging on the top of the house where the child was born. So it's just to show you that this was also a mistake from these people. But even though it was a mistake, God still had to preserve Jesus Christ because of the purpose that Jesus was coming to do. The salvation of mankind was upon the earth. So you can see that this came at a high price. Many people had to die so that Jesus can be saved, so that Jesus can be preserved. Now verse 17 says, And then was fulfilled that which was spoken by the prophet Jeremiah, saying, In Ramah was there a voice heard, lamentation and weeping and great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children, and would not be comforted, because they are not. So you can see that the people in Bethlehem cried, they wallowed, they were so in distress because Herod has issued the command and every single child, two years or under, must be killed just because he wants to make sure that Jesus Christ dies, just because he wants to make sure that the purposes of God are not coming to pass, just because he wants to make sure to protect his power to protect his authority as the king in that time but God being infinitely more wise than Herod had already seen that coming which is why he sent his angel to tell Joseph to depart imagine Joseph saying well you know what I'm gonna leave in the morning because you know I'm kind of tired I mean it's a, it's a tiresome journey to leave from you know Bethlehem and going back to Egypt so you saw that he it's probably cold so he was like he obeyed. Joseph obeyed immediately. So this is really um, an important thing that the Lord is also trying to say. In this season, there's a season of obedience. It's a season of obedience. Radical obedience to the instructions that God is giving you to do. Verse 19 here, we are almost done. He said, but when Herod was dead, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream. You see, 
we can see that the way God was communicating with Joseph, just from reading these first two chapters, God was really emphasizing important messages to Joseph in dreams. It means that Joseph, when he has dreams, he takes it very seriously. You see, God has a different way of speaking with one another in various ways. Could it be that God wants to speak to you, but you've been ignoring the means through which he wants to speak to you? We can see that through Joseph's life, dreams were a very important stream that God was using to relate to him messages. But for other people, God could just speak to them through a small still voice. He can speak to them through his word. He can speak to them through different ministers, different ways. But you need to take that time to be diligent to understand how the Lord is speaking to you. So, I want to finish here. Verse 20 says, Saying, Arise and take the young child and his mother and go into the land of Israel, for they are dead, which sought the, ch the young child's life. And he arose and took the young child and his mother and came into the land of Israel. Again, obedience. He arose. So, the moment the angel told him the message, the moment he received that, he obeyed. Verse 22, but when he heard that Achilles did reign in Judea in the room of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there. Notwithstanding, being warned of God in a dream. Like, please pay attention to this because God is actually speaking to us right now because I believe that this message is for you. If I'm speaking to you, I'm speaking to you because God is trying to bring your attention to your dreams. And you can see again and again how the Lord was communicating to Joseph how to give him instructions. And because Joseph has been obedient to the previous instruction, God was giving him the further instruction. Don't be waiting for God to give you instructions when you're not going to obey. You have to understand that if God has been giving you instructions and you haven't obeyed it, you must repent. Repent and ask God to forgive you because he's faithful and just to forgive you of all your sins and cleanse you out of all unrighteousness. So it is important that you repent of that and ask the Lord to show you mercy. So I believe that we, it's very clear on how the Lord was giving instruction to Joseph and how he wanted him to follow him by giving him instruction in his dream. And he turned, verse 22 here says, he turned aside into the parts of Galilee and he came and dwelt in a city called Nazareth, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet, he shall be called a Nazarene. So, God wanted me to speak on these things. Um, thank you for following to this point. But I want to end this by saying that couple of things that the Lord wants us to understand. Pay attention to your dreams. Pay attention to being obedient to the instructions that God has given you. Because if you're not faithful to obey the previous instruction, God is not going to give you the next instruction. So I want to thank God and let me pray for you. And I say, Father, I thank you for using me today to be able to reveal the essence and the true meaning of this i pray that every single person that watched me that the word that you have planted in their heart that word will remain in their heart that the enemy will not steal it and i pray that there will be grace for them to start moving into the next season of obedience that when you will speak to them, they will understand. That when you will speak to them, they will know it was you. And I pray that you will give them the discernment to know you. In Jesus' name, we pray, amen. Thank you so much for watching me this far. And I want to say Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. And please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video. Thank you.